Hey watercolor wizards, Hajra here. Aren't these lights really cool? Elijah and I saw them on New Year's in a Los Gatos park that one of my patrons told me to check out and it was totally worth it. These lights are gorgeous. I guess if you're sensitive to blinking lights, then don't watch this. But it'll be over soon. Today I'll be demoing a Victorian illustration study by Kate Greenaway. Thanks for parking your brushes here and let the epic art adventures begin. In a previous video, I did a similar study of a piece by Elsie Anna Wood and I hope that you check that out too. I wanted to do a companion study of a Kate Greenaway illustration because both pieces are done by female illustrators in a Victorian style with a child's tea party theme. I swatched the pans and the ink tents that I'll be using in a separate video and shared my swatches and information about the set in a free public post on Patreon, so those are there for you to check out as well. As I've noted in past videos, Inktense colors dry more matte and somewhat duller than my fine transparent watercolors or my fine gouache paints or my liquid Dr. PH Martin's inks. So just keep that in mind when you choose Inktense for a particular project. I'll start with some light glazes of blue for the local color of the dress of the first girl. This is just wet on dry, which is paint on dry paper, and I used a very thin color application to keep it delicate as Greenaway did. Then I utilized some wet and wet, which is wetting an area with water or paint first, then dropping in paint over it to create soft, fuzzy, bloomy edges. Using this technique and a gray mix from leftover paint on my palette, I applied shadows on the soft fabric of her bonnet. I came back with a second pass in some places while the paper was still damp to get darker shadows. Then I did more of the same for her collar and sleeve ruffles, her half gloves, her sash, and her slipper peeking out below. I used more wet and wet and shadow color to suggest the bench that they are perched upon as well as their cast shadows. Again, the soft edges from the damp paper are just right for the scant background of this piece. If your paper starts to dry on you, you can always add more water for this wet and wet technique. As usual, I have two brushes at work, one loaded with paint and the other with just water. Now I'm going to return to the blue dress and start to add darker blue snippets to imply fabric creases with resulting shadows. This will be done sometimes wet on wet and otherwise wet on dry with edges softened with a damp clean brush for more control. I followed a more delicate painting style in keeping with how Greenaway painted her illustration. There's such a lovely array of pinks, blues, and subtle greens and yellows in her original piece with her fine ink lines to complement the delicate color glazes. Her fabrics are similar to how Edmond Duloc, one of my favorite Golden Age illustrators, painted fabric with many flounces, ruffles, and delicate crinkles. With both illustrators, we see lots of little clean shadow areas shaped like commas or loose letter S's and C's to indicate fabric creases. And I'm just going to add those little creases all over the skirt, the blue bow on her bonnet, and then the bodice, sleeves, and overskirt. It'll add lots of dimensional pop.
and also do the teacup and saucer with the same blue, which is perfect for Victorian porcelain, the same way. Her bangs, or fringe as they would call it in England, are a Wheaton sort of yellow. It'll be wet paint on dry paper again for that peak of hair with a soft edge to merge into the central highlight. I'll make the biscuit or finger sandwich that she's nibbling on the same yellowish color for Harmony. And I'm going to try to make sure that the same ochreish, tannish yellow is going to show up in other parts of this piece so that there's not multiple versions of the same hue. Then I used a wet on dry flat glaze for the skin areas which are a soft pinkish peach color mix. While I leave the skin areas to dry, it's a good time to pop in darker blue values into the deepest fabric crease areas, and that's going to immediately make the blue fabric look even more poofy. I have the feeling that this is a taffeta dress, which is why it crinkles just so, and this girl in the bonnet maybe stayed up half the night making final adjustments to it so she can attend formal tea with these other girls who seem like they're old hands at tea parties. Maybe that's why the girl in blue has a bonnet. Not just for modesty, but also to hide the fact that she didn't have time to get her hair did. I wouldn't know personally, since I'm allergic to everything, so I've never been to a hair salon, or a makeup salon, or a nail salon my whole life. By now, the skin's had enough time to rest, and I can go and add in the shadows there. It's more wet on dry with a soft blended edge, and I used a pinker, darker color. When I develop the facial features, it also has to be the same technique. I use a lot of wet on dry with blended edges. It's my most common painting method, as I get gradients that are controlled, which is essential for detailed small areas. It'll just be more pink and pinkish brown here, and you'll see me do the eyes one way and then lift and correct while they're still wet because they look too basset houndy, and redo them with less of a downward drag on the lower outer eyelid. I'll do more of the same techniques two more times for the other girls, so keep a weather eye out to see if you can label where I use wet on dry flat sections, wet and wet with soft blooms, or wet on dry with controlled soft edges. Every artist has their own song to sing, their own unique voice to share. And so Kate Greenaway's piece has a completely different compositional setup and mood than Elsieanna Wood's piece from a previous video. Wood had a full outdoor scene with implied narrative, with little girls at a make-believe tea party with their toys. Kate Greenaway, conversely, depicted seven very proper little tea-sipping girls sitting in a neat row facing the viewer. The effect is very decorative and formally posed and poster-like in its dramatic setup. The only background is the narrow bench upon which they're all perched, along with the shadows they cast on the wall and the floor. I chose to do only three of the seven girls that I found most interesting and different from each other to make the study faster. Greenaway did several other tea party illustrations because tea time was a beloved British pastime and popular as an art subject. So there's another one of her illustrations with girls having tea time outside, but it's stiffer and less compelling than this one with the girls all in a row. She also did another vignette style illustration with little girls in a tree that I see has been purposed for tea party napkins on a modern website. Like the seven girls in a row, the tree scene is very decorative, fresh, and interesting, even more than a century after it. And as usual, my sketch and color reference are available for patrons to download if they want to paint along. I had a lot of fun doing the freehand sketch before commencing with the ink and paint part, and I almost decided not to add color. But the temptation of imagining the dresses in blue, green, and violet was just too much, and I ended up painting it.
apart from the number of figures reduced down to three, I added a few other original flourishes in my version, like a fascinator in the hair of the rightmost girl to assist with balance and flair in my amended study. and I'll also make the last girl a darker skin tone to add a bit of diversity. I went to grad school in London for my master's degree at LSE, and I was there for a whole year. I didn't do anything there except stress out and study, both on repeat, but I'd like to pretend that the medium skin colored girl with black hair on the right is symbolic for the proper British tea parties complete with cucumber sandwiches and scones in which I could have partaken if I wasn't freaking out about studying international history. If I had attended, I certainly would have worn a fascinator and wielded a fan just like this girl. Greenaway was British, like Elsie Anna Wood, though born some decades earlier than Wood, living from 1846 to 1901. She likely influenced Wood's illustration, as she influenced so many others, including Beatrix Potter. During her era, Greenaway was one of the three most influential illustrators, along with Walter Crane and Randolph Caldicott, and held the distinction of being the only female in that super trio. Like Caldicott, Greenaway has a prestigious illustration medal named after her that remains an active prize today. And as can be seen in this prim and proper group of Tea Party guests, Greenaway was famous for painting children in 18th century Queen Anne style costumes among idyllic rural or nature scenes. Because her mother was a seamstress, Greenaway drew her costumes with extreme detail and inventiveness. Audiences loved Greenaway's children in fancy adult attire so much that her nostalgic illustrations made the older costumes she painted fashionable again. And the well-known Liberty of London department store even released a line of children's apparel modeled after Greenaway's illustrated creations. Her subtle humor and wit comes through in this illustration. It's plain why Greenaway's little girls acting seriously and dressed in grown-up clothes, complete with half gloves, fans, bonnets, fine china, and plenty of starch frou-frou ruffles made her so well-known and loved. Well, wizards, I love the little costume flourishes and accessories in this piece, and it was tremendous fun to paint this study. And I hope you enjoyed participating in this art CT party as much as I did. Women like Kate Greenaway forged a path for other great artists like Beatrix Potter and Elsiana Wood to follow. They were pioneers in a male-dominated field and have inspired artists who are female and minorities like me, and they have my lasting respect and gratitude. Please like, comment, subscribe, and check out my website link, Skillshare, and Patreon page to support my art and art channel below. Thanks for parking your brushes here and wishing you all magical painting adventures.